I think I'm muted, guys. There we go. So now, <laughs> thanks, Michael, for letting me know by text that I was muted. I feel like a fool. All right, guys. So we are live. Cowboys medals live stream where we broadcast from the great state of texas and we take no bs thanks everybody for joining us on the live stream we're going to talk pal and his idiotic decision uh, to taper in the fed and whether they've screwed us already we've got a poll up guys if you're interested vote in the poll let us know if you think the feds already screwed us or if we've got a chance to dig our way out of this massive hole of 40 percent of money created all time last year and the inflation the hyperinflation that's already started in the economy. We're going to talk about that. And uh, I'm going to award another clown award, the third market clown award from Gold Silver Pros tonight. I bet you can guess who I'm going to give that to. Hey, everybody in the house. How is everybody doing? Michael is here moderating. Thank you, sir. Appreciate you being here. Gigi is here. Foo Bear is here. Grow Mechanic, Joseph Moss, Neil Hahn, Ministry of Metals. I love that name, by the way. Kristen Rowe is here. Who knows where in the country Kristen is? She's been hanging out all over the place. Came and saw us in August in Texas, the Money Metal Summit. Chris Jones is here. Anthony is here. Jake Crash. Hayden Martin, who we saw recently at Silverfest. Welcome, Hayden. How is everybody doing in the chat? We're going to let it load. We're up to about 40 viewers. So let more and more people come in. Hello, 100% Canadian. Uh, Chris Jones, Florida Dex. Everybody in the chat. Appreciate having you guys there. The news came out today. We got to talk about it. The big announcement from the Fed, they were going to do their big taper. Tapers when they basically reduce the amount of debt they're buying. They're still buying a crap ton of debt, but it came out 1 p.m. Central Time today, 2 p.m. Eastern. The Fed was going to reduce their monthly bond purchases of $120 billion by $15 billion. So it's still going to buy $105 billion every month. They're not stopping their purchases. They're not selling or just reducing it a little bit. This is really what I call a very limp move by the Fed. And I think that means that we're guaranteed hyperinflation. And I'm going to tell you guys why we're guaranteed hyperinflation. Hello, Tom, Jode, Frank, Severny. Everybody, in, Anthony is in there with the nice clown. <laughs> I've got a cool picture for you guys. I figured out how to overlay uh, clown makeup on a face. You guys got to see us. This is going to be awesome. <laughs> so here's the Fed. Uh, not raising interest rates, tapering bond purchase by $15 billion in the wake of the highest inflation we've had in, in what, at least 10 years? Well, more than that. I think it was almost 20 years. I think the highest inflation we got during the last financial crisis is about 4%. Um, so we're having more persistent inflation. And the, the problem with the Fed is they're mixing up their terms. You know, they say that inflation is transitory, uh, meaning it's not going to stay here, but then they use it's persistent in, in the economy at the same time. So is it transitory? Is it persistent? You know, uh, dep depends on, I guess, what your definition of transitory is, but they seem like an oxymoron. And then they said in their announcement that employment's getting better. There was a pretty good jobs print today by ADP, but think about 517,000 jobs, most of them big companies, most of it just rehiring in the hospitality sector. We're not back to where we were prior to 2020 and the virus. So we have not recovered. And what we've got going on around the world in Poland and Czechoslovakia, they've raised by 75 basis points in both countries. I think Czech said they might raise another 0.75% here in the next few days. They're going gangster mode, trying to address the issues of inflation in the economy. And as I look at the map over <clears throat> the rates of the central banks, Russia has the most room to move in case of a recession. Ukraine's pretty good. Belarus, Poland, Czechoslovakia. Slovakia and Hungary all have responsible central bank policies, but we don't have those here in the U.S. with the idiotic Fed who has blown the biggest bubble ever in the history of the world. I think it guarantees hyperinflation, and here's the reason why. If they couldn't do more than what they did today and just tapering by $15 billion, it means they're scared to death that they're going to crash the economy if they stop actually buying bonds every month. Remember, they're still buying $105 billion going forward. They just reduced the mortgage purchases by $5 billion and other bonds by $10 billion. That's nothing. That's a drop in the bucket. Think of how many trillions are out there it's, and have already been purchased. It's, it's nothing. It's a big nothing burger. They didn't say much on interest rates. I was totally disappointed. We thought that they were going to announce potentially a date to raise interest rates in 2022. They didn't do it. It was a limp, limp performance. Powell looked completely flustered. I think he knows we're screwed. I think if you look at his behavior, forget what he says. He knows we are absolutely 100% screwed. 
too much money already printed, too much debt. The Fed can do nothing. They can't go interest rates. The market would revolt. I think they're going to do that as a drastic measure when the recession hits, but they can't do it now because they would crash their beloved stock market that they want you guys to think is an indicator that the economy is healthy. And I'm here to tell you, it's not. The economy is not healthy. It's falling down all over the place. I got my Walmart in my town papering over basically and covering up one third of their floor space, pretending that they haven't run out of product. We've got supply chain shortages all over the place. We don't have enough investment in new goods and materials at the mining stage and at the harvesting stage. We're screwed from a supply chain perspective and all the Fed can do is taper the bond purchases by 15 billion. They've got no bullets left in their gun. We talked about that with Ian and Chris Temple in a video last week, a round table last week, and I 100% agree with Chris when he said that no bullets left in the gun. They're screwed, they can't do anything. If they try to raise interest rates at all, we're going to have a 20% correction in the stock market like we did Q4 of 2018. It's going to happen again. In fact, we could have 25 to 30%. I'm convinced now anything that they do that even looks somewhat bearish or somewhat restricted by the Fed is going to absolutely tank the stock market and freak the hell out out of everybody. Because the only thing going good right now is the stock market, and it's because of all the free money. Everything else in the economy is a complete and utter wreck. Jobs have not recovered, even dating back all the way to 2008 prior to the mortgage crisis. We've got massive inflation coming down the pike, much more than the CPI indicates. I think it's the 10 to 12% range. Johnny Williams' the shadow stats give a similar number. We've got jobs never recovering. We have people walking out of jobs not getting paid enough because wage rate inflation is not keeping up with the cost of goods that you buy at the store. We've got a lack of goods. And they're screwed. We're just all screwed. We're all screwed. We just, you know, a lot of people don't know it, but I think they're going to find out pretty quick. This right now, this, this today will be looked at as one of the seminal events and the unwinding of the current American economy and the world economy. It's going to be one step closer to when this thing just blows the hell up all over our face. Now, this thing can still go for a couple more years. There's a saying that markets can stay irrational longer, you can stay solvent. People can try to keep this thing propped up for as long as they can. But the longer that they do, all I know is this thing is going to crash and burn, baby. It is going to crash and burn. I want to read you a quote from the Fed announcement. Listen to what they're telling you here. Forget what the idiots and the mediates say, the media idiots, the mediates say in the press. Listen to what they said. The, the shocking admission by the Fed, it says... Our Fed Chairman Powell says this, and this is quoted in CNBC, our baseline expectation is that supply chain bottlenecks and shortages will persist well into next year with elevated inflation as well. Persist. This is not transitory supply chain problems. This is not transitory shortages. This is not transitory inflation. He used the term, and I quote, persist well into next year with elevated inflation as well. Who the fuck do you think you're fooling, you stupid idiot? We understand what you're saying. We see it. Main Street sees it. When I go to the store, I just went and bought groceries tonight. 90 bucks for about 10 days worth of supplies for me and my son. Absolutely ridiculous. I've never paid more for the same groceries I always buy as I did tonight. He goes on to state, as the pandemic supplies, supply chain bottlenecks, will abate and growth will move up. And as that happens, inflation will decline from today's level. But he doesn't say when, and they do say that it'll be elevated into next year. I think they're guessing. They don't have the foggiest damn clue when things are gonna get better and they got no tools. They can't go negative interest rate without panicking the market. They can't stop buying bond purchases without crashing the market. If they raise interest rates, we saw what happened in 2018, you talk in 20, maybe even 30% stock market correction will freak everybody the hell out because what that's going to do, it's going to hit your pension funds. It's going to hit your 401ks and people are going to freak out. The only thing that's doing well for people right now is real estate and their 401ks. Okay. If you panic the bond markets, there goes the real estate market. If you raise interest rates, there goes the housing market because every percentage that you raise interest rates that affects the housing market, those house prices have to come down. You will freak people out as they think that their house is their biggest investment. It's not their biggest cost factor. Anybody that follows Robert Kiyosaki, the great Robert Kiyosaki knows that. Do not count your house as your biggest asset. Oh my goodness, we have got so much to talk about. 
Reminder, guys, in 25 minutes at 8 p.m. Central, 9 p.m. Eastern, I will be on Liberty and Finance talking with Elijah on this very same thing on the taper announcement by the Fed and how that's going to affect precious metals. And the quote that I gave to Elijah was, it's going to be transitory, okay? The effect on, on gold and silver be transitory. Let's go ahead and share screen here. This is it, Liberty and Finance. I'm here in the next 23 minutes. So we're going to do 23 minutes of Q&A and of interaction with you guys. I'm going to log off and go watch Liberty and Finance where you'll see me here in just a few minutes. Would love to see you guys there. We're already getting comments in this video. Neil is there. Sarge is there. A lot of our followers are there. Gold, silver pros are flocking to Liberty and Finance Channel to see us. We'd love to see that happen. Stephen is there. All my guys are there. Thank you guys for supporting us on this channel. And thank you for supporting when I go to other channels as well. I think we're totally screwed. That's my opinion. We're running a poll. 48 votes. Did the Fed screw us already with their easy money policies? 48 votes. 98% said yes and one said no. One person thinks no. <laughs> and I'd like to get, if, if you're the person that voted no in that poll, I'd like to see your reason for that and try to talk me off the ledge here. If you have something that I haven't tried to, I haven't seen or figured out about, about the Fed and, and we're not totally screwed and there is a silver lining somewhere, please let me know. I mean, please let me know. Any positive news, I'll take it, post down there in the chat. All right, questions, questions, questions. Sarge says Chinese bonds in about seven question marks. What's up? Okay, so Sarge and I were talking earlier on the Liberty and Finance chat for our video that's starting in 25 minutes. And he said, Robbie, have you heard anything on the Chinese bonds? Not really. The last I heard, there were four that have defaulted. There was one payment made by Evergrande supposedly at the 11th hour on the last day to pay for some to, to stave off default. I don't know whether that was only for the local bonds or the holders that were offshore. I, it did, the article did not say. I've seen nothing else substantive on Evergrande or Cynic or Fantasia that would lead me to believe that they're not going to completely default. So I don't know if they're just being silent for a reason, but absolutely 100%. Uh, if, when I get updates, I'll definitely will let you guys know 100%. All right. Any other questions in the chat? Zillow is tanking. Kristen says, yes, Zillow is tanking. The idiots at Zillow thought, first of all, that their data was accurate. I will tell you how the data at Zillow is not accurate, at least for the state of Texas. The state of Texas is a non-disclosure state. You don't get sales data on real estate. It's all within the MLS and they do not report it. It is state law unless you voluntarily report it. The values in Zillow are guesstimates based upon listing prices and what they think the sales prices could be. It's not accurate. A lot of states are just like that. Zillow has crappy data. So does Trulia. They all have crappy data depending on where you live. So Zillow does this model where they're going to buy your home and turn around and sell it. They become flippers, right? And is Zillow sending people out to really appraise your house when they buy it? No, they have this idiotic process where they think because real estate's going to go up forever because we live in the everything bubble and nothing can ever go wrong. They're going to buy a bunch of real estate and turn around, flip it. And guess what? It's blown up all over them. They're now laying off employees and we'll see if Zillow goes out of business or declares default. Zillow is an absolute mess because the idiots bought into the top of the real estate bubble. Forget that. I sold my real estate in 2018 on my rental real estate because I knew it was coming. Good to get out early. Flipped over into precious metals. Glad I did. Good returns on my In fact, I've been buying precious metals in 2008, but a lot of the real estate profits that we had in 2018, we put right back into precious metals in a cash position, just sitting waiting for this whole mess you know, to crash and, and for us to buy when there's blood in the streets, as JP Morgan said. Nobody special finance has a question. Rob, what are your thoughts on the bullion banks being net neutral on the COT report for silver? So, I've said this before when they went net neutral a little while back, maybe it was about three weeks ago or a month ago. I think they're setting up for the long haul in silver and gold. They expect silver and gold to pop and they don't want to be record short when that happens. Now, there is still a lot of short exposure in silver on the bullion banks. They're net even because they've taken longs, but they can adjust that position on a daily basis, 25 times, 50 times a day if they want. The other thing to consider is their option exposure. They have the trading data for the people that trade through them. They know what their positions are. So they will also not only take a position in the futures market, but also in the options market on the COMEX. And that allows them to kind of play both sides and make, money, make double money while they trade against their book, trade against their clients. They'll say they won't do it, but I guarantee you they do because all the brokers and all markets do. And at the end of the day, that is a big issue. Um, yeah, people texting me, sorry, it's not feeling. that's a big issue. And 
I don't think we've heard the last of that yet. Um, the bullion banks are going to make money either way. I think they're setting up for a long market in gold and silver. I don't know whether this is the big boom because we've seen them adjust their positions before and then turn around and go net short again. So is this the big one? Are they setting up for the big boom? I don't know, but obviously they're expecting the price to rise. We are going to see what happens. Jam says, here's a question. If I wear a mask, will it protect me from seasonal flu and common cold? I'm not a medical expert, so take everything I say here with a grain of salt. In my research on major websites, major health websites, the masks do not have a small enough filter. Okay, It's not like a carbon filter. Your basic N95 is just cloth and paper. Does not have a small enough filter to stop viruses and bacteria that are much smaller than the holes or the pores within the paper and cloth. This is what I've read. I'm not an expert. I don't manufacture these things. I don't represent the companies. I'm not a health professional. This is just what I've read. I've had other people in the health industry tell me, well, it stops some of it. In other words, it stops you sneezing and sort of that kind of thing, even though it may not stop all the rest. But again, take it with a grain of salt. I am not an expert. Do not listen to what I say there. What other questions do you guys have? Put them down in the chat. Remember, Super Chats are open. If you want to support the channel, you can do that. And I guarantee I will answer all those questions and I'll try to get to the rest of them. Let's go back in time in the chat. Joseph Moss says, can we sometime in the future talk about just how far much can they paper over fiscal in respect to ratio? As much as they want, because as you will see tomorrow night on the channel, I have a conversation with Denver Dave from Investment Research Dynamics and Glenn Jessam, CEO of, of Silver Tiger Metals. And we talk about silver and we talk about the COMEX and we talk about the paper. And what Dave points out and what I point out is that the COMEX was set up, the, the derivatives market was set up to increase volatility and discourage physical ownership and was never set up as a physical delivery market. And we've had more physical deliveries in the past few years than we've ever had in, in any similar time frame in the history of the COMEX. So people are starting to take delivery. It's not what it was set up for. And as you see us document, myself and Chris Marcus from Arcadia Economics, Rafi Farber's attempt to get a one, one silver contract off the COMEX and how ridiculously difficult that is. You will note from both a manual and a technical perspective, an IT or a software perspective, they don't really want you to take delivery. The system is an absolute mess. You have to have an army of people trying to get this stuff off. The systems are interconnected. They're crappy. They don't do great tracking. They lose your order. It is a god awful mess. We are going to put all of that into a video for you guys at some point. As soon as Ravi finally figured out if he can get delivery months later, I think we're in month three now, if I recall. We started this in the summer. We're going to document all of that for you. It's not delivery market. Okay, the poll is still 96% yes. Did the Fed screw us already with their easy money? A couple of people have voted no. I'm going to leave that poll open in the chat. Continue to vote in that poll, please. I want to see your thoughts, but it looks like you guys are all with me, which is good to know. It means I'm having a little bit of an effect on you guys, or maybe you guys are already smart and I'm taking too much credit for that. Uh, what other questions do you have? We have 150 people going. Awesome, awesome, baby. Ministry of Metal says crash and burn, baby. Yeah, it's going to crash and burn, and man, it's going to hurt a lot of people. You you don't have a lot of time left to get your medals and to take care of your financial situation. We've got videos coming out where I'm going to show you three to five easy things to balance your budget, to get precious metals, to handle supply chain shortages. Those are going to come out on Sunday. The next three or four consecutive Sundays, we're going to have helpful videos out on how to do things and how to prepare and how to take care of yourself and just common sense things. But we need a reminder of that. That's coming to the channel on Sundays, guys. Stay Pay attention for that. Uh, da, 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 da. All right. Any other questions? I'm going all the way back to the beginning of the chat. I don't see any other questions. I do see a super chat from the one and the only Kevin Gartling. Thank you so much, Kevin Gartling, for your support. Will there be a time to roll out of fiat gains from small cap junior silver miners into physical when they... The run to PMs begins due to inflation hyper. Okay, here's my thought on what will happen based upon past history. Again, I'm not your financial advisor. Do your own research, make your own decisions. But what we've seen in history is when you have a big crash, the miners kind of go down and then they pop up and then they outrun the metals. So in my thought, as the metals just pop because of the next financial crisis, whenever that is, the next year to two to three to five years, I think it's going to be 2024-ish time frame if they can hold it that long. When that happens, guys, the metals will go up. And as a function of that, because they're leveraged, the miners will go up more exponentially. 
So if, if silver hits 50, think about what's going to happen to first majestic or even these junior uh, producing miners, anybody that's producing is going to go up ridiculously. And even the explorers who are looking for this stuff, if you've got any amount of resource on your books and any sort of 43101 compliant report, pre-feasibility study, uh, economic analysis, or just a 43101 on your juror results, on your, your measured and indicated ounces, okay, you're going to go, they're going to go bonkers. Now there's going to be that initial dip as everybody sells everything fleeing to cash. But then when they realize the only safe havens really are precious metals and physical things and the people that get them out of the ground, they're going to go bonkers. So I think that's the answer to your question. That's the way I see it happening. Again, do your own research, look at history. Uh, Joseph Mott, thank you. Been watching Rafi. We'll keep watching the Rafi Silver Acquisition Devil Cole. Yes, watch it. Rafi is awesome. One of my friends from Seeking Alpha, I don't want to take too much credit, but I did introduce him to Arcadia and some other YouTubers. He's now started his own YouTube channel. He got into it. He Before, he just wanted to write. He wasn't interested in it. We got him interested, myself and Chris Marcus. Rafi is now a star on YouTube doing a great job. Happy to see that. Rafi is one of the nicest guys in the world. One of my friends back from when I was an analyst and I was writing. Love Rafi absolutely to death, guys, and, and glad he's there. We have 13 more minutes by my clock before we go over to the Liberty and Finance channel. Let's share that channel again with you guys. Liberty and Finance channel, I was interviewed this afternoon by Elijah. That starts in 12 minutes, Liberty and Finance uh, YouTube. A lot of you guys are already over there. Thank you for already starting the comment stream. I will be over there as well, uh, watching and chatting with you guys after we are done here. So thank you so much for supporting channel Thank you for supporting Liberty and Finance. Clements Consulting comes with a super chat. Thank you so much, Clements, for the support. I appreciate all the support we get here on YouTube, just from people coming to the video, the super chats, and also those that are supporting us on Patreon. It's been an overwhelming amount of support that we've gotten on Patreon, and, and we provide you guys super special content for supporting us there. You can go to patreon.com slash goldsilverpros if you want to do that. If not, Feel free just to come to the free videos. We're, we're going to do as much as we can for you guys. Clements Consulting says, so let's buy 50,000 shares of SLV, take physical delivery, cycle it through your condenses, rinse and, re rinse and repeat till SLV is empty. You can do that if you can get the money behind it and you're 50,000 shares, according to their perspectives, last time I looked a couple of months ago, you could go get the silver, but do they really have it? Some of the people that I know think that they don't or that it's rehypothecated in other contracts. And the prospectus on SLV says there's no guarantee to get your silver. So if there's another claim on it that was on that silver, SLV can say, you know what? We told you, you can't actually get the silver. So you could try it and maybe a great idea, Clements Consulting, if you want to do it. If you want to try it once, let us know how it goes. But I think it's going to be a lot like the Comex where it may be a little bit harder to get that silver than you think. But great idea. I like your thought process there. Another perhaps more effective way to do it and guaranteed getting your silver is go over to arcsilver.com. My friend Ian Everard uh, will hook you up with a Comex bar. If you have about 25 grand, 99 cents over spot, cheapest way you can get bulk silver, get a beautiful Comex bar like we did and put the video out on the channel earlier this week. Thousand ounces, uh, Comex bar, Ian Everard, Arc Silver. You can get your silver that way if you got enough money to do it. I mean, if you're buying 50,000 shares of SLV, might as well go buy a thousand ounce silver bar. Basically the same money there and get it where you know you can get it and don't mess around with these jokers at SLB or on the comics. Let somebody else do it for you. Ian will provide that service for you. Arc Silver got mine from the Dakota Depository, which was a lot of fun. Very cool from a Korean zinc company. It was a byproduct. This silver was a byproduct of zinc manufacturing. Frederick Newcomb, Gold Silver Pros. We'll be waiting for you at Liberty and Finance, Rob. Thank you, Frederick, so much. I appreciate it. I had a lot of fun at Liberty and Finance interview. Now, I love Elisha because he, he constantly offers me the ability to speak to his audience. I'm very honored for that. I have a hell of a lot of respect for Dunnigan and Elijah and everybody that have run a Liberty and Finance back when it was Reluctant Preppers and now Liberty and Finance. I love that channel. It was one of my go-tos for years and years and years. And now to be on that channel is an incredible honor. And I respect Elijah so much. It's a great interview. He lets me just give my opinion and speak. And it's wonderful when somebody else will let you do that. So I appreciate that opportunity. And, and I think we're gonna have a lot of fun over there. All right, other questions. I'm looking in the chat, guys. You got any other questions? Mystery Metal says more likes, people. I hit that like button, notif notification bell, subscribe, all that good stuff. YouTube is the algorithm's not always really good about telling you guys when stuff is coming up. But if you do all that and then you come to our Twitter, we're going to notify you when new content's coming up. Or you know what? You could just open the Gold Silver Pros YouTube channel and leave it open all day and you'll see the videos pop up. That's another way to do it. Turn it on, leave it on, as they say. 
Uh, da, 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 da. Thank you, Rob, for all the info and time. You're welcome, Florida Dex. Okay, we're going to recap what we have talked about. For those of you that may have just entered, the Fed announced today at 1 p.m. Eastern, I'm sorry, 2 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. Central Time, my time, that they are going to taper, which means reducing, not stopping, but reducing the amount of bonds that they purchase every month by 15 billion. This will put them at roughly 105 billion that they're still purchasing. Said nothing really about raising rates, uh, definitively, at least in 2022. The market, the Dow and the S&P hit all-time highs right after it. Gold and silver sold off prior to it. An expectation of that news and the positive ADP employment report that also came out today. I talk about both of those on Liberty and Finance. So I'll give more detail at 8 p.m. Central, 9 p.m. Eastern on Liberty and Finance Channel here in nine minutes. So more data on that, the economic news and how it affected gold and silver. But we talked about Powell and his ridiculousness with uh, how limp he was, how limp the Fed is. They're stuck between a rock and a hard place. They have no interest rates uh, to cut. If they, if they raise interest rates, it's automatic market correction like we saw in quarter four 2018. They can't stop buying buying purchases. They can only adjust a little bit or taper it a little bit or else they're going to panic the market. They're stuck. They've got no bullets in the gun. Guys, I have got to show you, I'm about to award... I'm about to award the clown award for the third clown award on gold silver pros. Remember guys, I told you a month or two ago, I was going to start awarding clown awards. People that are absolute clowns, they either lie to you or misrepresent or get the facts wrong or do things like defrauding the market. The first one, the first one we gave away about a month ago was Jim Cramer for a video I showed that was posted on my friend Ton's channel, the Ponzi factor. Okay. On his Twitter of Jim Cramer in an industry video meant to be an insider's video, basically, for financial professionals, never meant to see the light of day in the public internet, where he admitted as a hedge fund manager to dumping five or 10 million on the market to manipulate the market and take profits. In other words, trade against his customers. Now he's on CNBC, had a radio show going for a while where he's telling people what to buy. Does it strike you as any what a conflict of interest that he was giving advice while as a hedge fund manager, he was trading against the market and influencing it by dumping five and $10 billion of the paper to get the trade that he wanted. The second went, of course, to Jeffrey Christian for criticizing Mike Maloney when Mike Maloney wasn't there to defend himself and attacking him personally, attacking Andrew McGuire personally, and then calling me an asshole at the Silver Symposium Conference. That was our second Market Clown Award. And guys, I got to show you this picture. Our third Market Clown Award is, drum roll, the one and only Jerome Powell of the Fed. I like him in his clown costume. I got the little makeup there. He's got the little, the cool hat, you know, the little nose, totally dressed up like a clown. Sorry, Fed, you get the third gold, silver pros market clown award because you guys are clowns because one, you screwed everything up by all of your quantitative easing policies since the last financial crisis, 2008, 2009, and dropping 40% of all money supply, all M1 money supply ever created in one year last year, and then causing the inflation that we see in our prices today. And now coming out limply, okay, impotently, and only tapering 15 billion and basically telling the market, you can't do a damn thing. And we're headed straight for hyperinflation and deflationary debt collapse all at the same time, Jerome Powell, and the rest of you Fed cronies and Fed idiots who are Keynesians and believe that you can print your way to prosperity, you get the third Gold Silver Pros Clown Award. I love this. I'm, I'm definitely going to put this up all over Twitter after we get off here. Third Clown Award, Jerome Powell, well, well, well deserved and received. Bam. Thank you, guys. A uh, couple minutes left, five minutes left before we go over to Liberty and Finance. Going to start right after this. 171 people viewing, 175. We're popping views here. Thank you guys so much for joining. We've been talking the Fed, how they've run out of bullets. We've been talking supply chain, how it's leading to inflation. We've been talking about how this thing's going to run off the tracks. We got a poll going, guys, and we'll leave it open for another couple of minutes. 102 votes, the most popular poll we have ever posted on the channel. Question is, did the Fed screw us already with their easy money policies? 97% say yes. Only 3% say no. Is that a surprise to all the extremely brilliant, intelligent, well-learned, and no BS people on Cowboy Metal's live stream and Gold Silver Pros? I think not. Once again, this is Cowboy Metal live stream special edition, dealing with the idiots at the Fed, the clowns at the Fed, for their announcement today of their tapering program. And this is Cowboy Metal's live stream where we broadcast from the great state of Texas and take no BS. Wanted to give a call out to my buddy, Dumb Money Media, for supporting us 
all the times he's been in the chat, the meme videos. He sent us a couple of gifts, which I, I showed in an unboxing video from Silver Symposium. I wanted to give him another shout out. So here's Goku with his golden hat here that uh, Dumb Mini Media sent me. It's really cool. See if I can get the camera to focus on a little bit. Thank you so much for that little pewter. Uh, I keep it right here on the desk to remind me of the support that uh, Dumb Money Media has given us. And he also sent us all, myself and Jen and Danny, the whole team, some silver slivers. This is really cool. Look at that. That is a nice little jar of silver. I love it. I absolutely 100% love it. Thank you so much, Dumb Money Media, for supporting us. I don't see you here today, but he's been here in all of our videos. Appreciate it very much. All right, one last question. we got four minutes. Any questions? Are you down with the clown? Rob, keep up these awesome videos coming. Thank you, Sarge, so much. Let me see any other questions. Neil Hahn has a comment. The more he messes up, the more my silver will be worth. That's true, Neil. Uh, Hayden says, oh, the commie is broken. I agree with you. Nobody special finance. Very grateful. Thanks for that recommendation. I'll have to check that one out. You are welcome. Uh, whether it was me or someone else in the chat. Don't see any other questions. I'm looking. Last question. Let me get it in. Get it in. We got a couple of minutes. A couple of minutes left. Oh, I don't see anyone. Ah, we got one from Barakim Kikim Stacker NZ. Basil 3, any idea on the effect? Yeah, Basil 3, I think, and I've said this in many, many, many videos before. I think I did six videos on this. Basil 3, I think, is part of the, the big effect is to remonetize gold in the banking system, make it a high quality liquid asset. As long as it's hedged in the futures market, price hedging, it's basically equivalent to cash. I think they're trying to pull some of the gold market out of London and sort of de-monopolize that market. London will still be there. I think they're trying to push a lot of it to China because it's a new rising world power. I think you may see some gold trade pop up in, in other states in Europe. I think you're gonna see it pop up in the Middle East. That's the biggest long-term trend that I see. I also talked to Silver Symposium and put the videos here on the channel that I think they're trying to move the gold trade down to Texas as well. They've, they've said that Texas Bullion Repository was originally developed to rival the New York depositories. And they're talking about moving the derivative markets down to Texas. So it looks like gold trade is moving around all over the place and Basel III is a part of that. I think Basel III and the moving of the gold trade to different markets is part of the overall global reset. It's part of it. And this is all being set up over the years for when the big crash comes, all the infrastructure in place to flip that switch and do the financial reset. And I think gold and silver are gonna be a big part of that. 100% guys, we're gonna wind it down. I got about a minute and a half left. Thank you everybody for supporting us for the super chats, for just the support of watching the videos. I appreciate you guys. We got up to about 180 people. Awesome, awesome, awesome. I love you guys so much. Remember, Gold Silver Pros, Patreon, if you want to support us that way, we have $5 level, other levels to help support us. Those of you that, that do that, we will provide you special information that, that uh, only you guys get to see in appreciation for that. All right, guys, we're about to wind it down. Thank you, Michael, for riding shotgun with us and moderating the channel. We appreciate you being one of our biggest supporters. Hope everything's going uh, well out there in San Fran, Cali. Thank you, everybody, for joining. Uh, oh, last question. Hugh Albrecht, I'll answer it real quick. If silver spot price goes to 50, the retail people sell for a profit, would that flood the market with supply? I don't think there's that much supply at 50. I, David Morgan and I think it'd go to 600 to 1,000. And I think the strong hands know that. So yeah, a little bit of retail supply. But in the grand scheme of things, no. The mass majority of it's going to sit there and wait for triple digit silver. Triple, 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 triple digit silver. Tomorrow we have a video on triple digit silver. Watch that. It's going to be on the channel, guys. I got to hop off. Let's all go over to Liberty and Finance. Watch me talk with Elijah. Thank you, everybody, for joining. This has been the live Q&A, the Fed just guaranteed and historic stock market and melt up and crash. Remember, the stock market will pop and then it will crash. That's coming to a stock market theater and a broker near you. Thank you, everybody, for joining the channel. We're going to end this one. We're going to head right over to Liberty and Finance to for my video fed tapers metal sell off see you guys there shortly and remember video tomorrow night with two experts talking about silver and triple digits till next time this is rob keens with gold silver pros